Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my algebra video tutorial series. In this part, we're going to talk about factorization, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, prime factorization, the greatest common factor, factoring polynomials, and factoring by grouping. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so factorization is just writing a number as the product of multiple different factors. So, for example, if you had 6, factorization would be... 3, converting it into 3 times 2. And the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that all natural numbers are either prime numbers or can be expressed as a product of prime numbers. And we will see examples of that. And specifically, prime factorization is finding the prime values when multiplied together that equal a number. So let me just show you some examples. So let's go and get the prime factorization of 8. What would that be? Well, would it be 2 times 4? Well, that does indeed equal 8. However, we don't have prime numbers here. So what we want to do instead is just use prime numbers to find the value of 8. And to do that, you would get 2 times 2 times 2 which would be equal to 2 to the third. So the prime factorization of 8 is 2 to the third. Let's see some more of these. So what is the prime factorization of 9? Well, once again, this is going to be rather easy. This is just going to be 3 times 3 because 3 is prime. All right, so good stuff. Let's find the prime factorization of 20. So, once again, we're just looking for prime values. So what we have to do, for example, 2 times 10 would not be true because 10 is not a prime value. However, this is sort of a sign that we're moving down the right direction because what we need to do then is figure out what values uh, that are prime can be multiplied together to give us a value of 10. Well, if we take 2 times 2 times 5, all of those are prime, and hence we found our prime factorization. Let's do another one. Prime factorization of 48. What would that be? Well, we just need to think, let's say 2. We know that's prime. So what is 2 times 24? Well, it equals 48. So a trick that we can do is we can actually just use what we have here, and then figure out how to get 24 just by multiplying with primes. So we'll have 2 times, and then we have 2 again, and 2, and 2 times 3 gives us 24, and hence the prime factorization, what we do is we just add up 1, 2, 3, 4, 2's, so that would be 2 to the 4th times 3. So the prime factorization of 48 is 2 to the power of 4 times 3. I think that's enough examples. So now let's talk about the greatest common factor. Well, the greatest common factor is the value that divides two numbers. And how we find it is we list the prime factors of each number, and then we multiply those factors that both have in common. So let's go and use examples here so we understand. So the greatest common factor of 24 and 36. There's a good example. So what do we do? Well, we just go and get these values. So we'll, we'll basically find what the prime factorization of 24 is. And that works out to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And then we do the exact same thing for 36. So this is going to be 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. So like I said, we are going to look for the values that both have. And if we do that, well, we see there's a 2 here and there's a 2 here. And there's a 2 here, and there's a 2 here, and there's a 3 there, and a 3 there. And then if we go and multiply those together, we end up finding that we have 
a greatest common factor of 12 because 2 times 2 times 3 equals 12. All right, let's go and do another one to make sure this is clear. So we'll go and do the same thing again, but we are going to be using 54 this time and 72. So once again, we will get 54, figure out how to get 54 if we just use primes. So we're going to get 2 times 3 times 3 times 3, and that gives us 54. And then we can go and do the same for 72. And we could say something like 2 to the 36th is equal to 72, which is also going to be equal to 2, and I'm going to do this long hand this time, 2 to the 18th, just so you can see it, which is going to be equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 9, and there's all those. And then that is, of course, going to work out to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And then if we look at what factors they have in common, well, there's a 2 right there, and there's a 2 right there, and there's a 3 right there, and a 3 right there, and a 3 right there, and a 3 right there. And if we multiply 2 times 3 times 3, we get the greatest common factor, and that is going to be 18. Why don't we take this up a notch, though? Let's go and try to find the greatest common factor for three values. So this time, I'm going to say that I want to find the greatest common factor of 64, 128, and 160. And I'm going to show you this in a different form again, just to figure out which, white, which you prefer. This is what I prefer. So we're going to say 64 is going to be equal to 2 times 32, which is going to be equal to 2 squared times 16, which is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 3 times 8, which is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 4 times 4, which is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 5 times 2. And that gives us a final value of 2 to the power of 6, which means we have 6 twos with 64. Now in this situation, again, we can have 128. Well, this is going to be 2 times 64. Oh, look at that. So we just go and add another 2 there. So this becomes 2 to the power of 7. See, that's what 64 is. So we know we can save ourselves some time. Right, let's take this to another level with 160 this time, however. And we're going to say 2 times 80 is going to be 2 to the power of 2 times 40, which is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 3 times 20 which is 2 to the power of 4 times 10, which is 2 to the power of 5 times 5. So that gives us 5 twos and a 5. And if we go and we look at what is in common between all of these, well, we see that we have uh, 5 twos here, we have 6 twos there, we have 7 twos there, so that means the maximum is going to be the greatest common factor is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 5, which is equal to 32. All right, so there we go. And now what we want to talk about is factoring polynomials. Now, you can find the greatest common factor of terms as well by finding factors in common. So I'd like to just use examples because I think that's the easiest way to really figure it out. So what I want to do is I want to find the greatest common factor of 6x squared and 24x to the third. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say that 6x squared is going to be equal to, again, prime values, 2, 3, and x squared. And then we're going to have 
x to the power of 3 is equal to 2 times 12 x to the power of 3 which is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 2 times 6 x to the third which is going to finally be equal to 2 to the power of 3 times 3 x to the third and if we look at what all of them have in common well that ends up being equal to 6 x squared because both are in both of those values because of course this is going to be a 2 times a 3 and we have an extra 2 here and we have a 3 here and both of them are going to have x squared okay so there we go so let's go and do another one so this time I'm gonna say I want to find the greatest common factor of and let's do 54 x y to the power of 4 and 72 x to the power of 3 y squared okay so we'll start off with 54 here x y to the power of 4 is equal to now whenever you look at this you already know what the x and y part's going to be you're going to have x and you're going to have y squared because they are contained in both of them so you already got that part so you just have to figure out the number part all right so let's just go and do it so we have 2 and 27 which is going to be equal to 2 3 9 again all primes except for that 9 let's go and get rid of it so that's going to be 2 3 to the power of 3 x y to the fourth and then let's do the same for the 72 part x to the third y squared which is going to be figure out the 72 that's 2 times 36 equals 72 which let's go it's even so you know there's going to be another 2 here so there's that times 18 which is equal to 2 to the third and this is going to be 9 okay well we're no longer using even values so this is going to be 2 to the third and then 3 squared and x to the third and y squared and then if we look at what we have in common here you'll see that this is going to end up being equal to 2 we have a 2 in both we have a 3 squared in both and we have an x and a y squared in both and if we multiply the 2 times 3 squared which is 9 we end up with a greatest common factor for this polynomial of 18 x y squared all right so now to finish off i want to talk about factoring by grouping now to factor by grouping what you want to do is you want to factor out the greatest common factor and very often what you're going to find yourself doing is you're going to create smaller groups and then factor out the greatest common factor from them and you're going to continue doing this until it is no longer possible to do it so once again let's show you some examples i'm going to do a whole bunch because this confuses some people all right so i'm going to say 4x squared plus 2 or 20 let's do 20 20x plus 3x plus 15. all right so what we're going to do here is we're going to look for a common factor and we can see here if we have 4x that is going to be if multiplied by x to the fifth okay there's a common factor well then we can see over on the right side that we can also get the same common factor of x plus 5 right like that and that is how we can get that value out and then what we do after this is just simply take our great our common factor which is going to be x plus 5 and this is going to be multiplied times 4 x to the power of 3 and if you go and work that out and multiply those values together you're going to see that that indeed is true let's go and do it again with a different one so here I'm going to say x squared plus 21 x plus 4 x plus 20 
eight. All right, so what we're gonna see here is that we are going to be able to say three X, X plus seven plus, and use again the same common factor here, is going to be four X plus seven. And then once again, we can take that common factor out and that would give us X plus seven times three X plus four. All right, let's go and do a couple more here. All right, so let's try three X squared plus three X minus 10 X minus 10 and three X. Our common factor is going to be X plus one minus 10 and again, X plus one and we get our final result of x plus one times three x minus 10. So you may say to yourself, well, what if we have a trinomial? How can we figure that out? Well, what we're gonna do is you're going to basically rewrite the expression to put it into a format that is like this. So let's say, for example, we have two x squared plus 11 x plus five. Well, we can go and if we look at this, we can see that we have a five right here and we have a two right here and we have an 11 right here. Well, it would work out really wonderful if we had a 10 X. So that is what we will do. We will say two X squared plus 10 X and then leave the result plus one X plus five, and then we just work out the common factor, which is gonna be two X, and then X plus five plus one, and X plus five to get our final result, common factor, X plus five times two X plus one. And there we are, so there's five examples of how we can regroup and a whole bunch of information about factoring in general. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna talk about radical expressions. So like always, please leave all your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.